Hello, this is Cityscape, a regular podcast featuring people, place, and ideas that impact Livonia. I'm Dan West with the Livonia Chamber of Commerce. After a two-year COVID hiatus, the Livonia Spree returns here to Ford Field in Livonia for the six days of rides, food, bands, gatherings, and funds that culminates with a famous fireworks display. The Livonia Spree kicks off Tuesday, June 21st and ends Sunday, June 26th with one of Metro Detroit's best fireworks shows. The origins of this community celebration dates back to 1970 when Mayor Ed McNamara called for an event to acknowledge Livonia's 20th birthday as a city. It started with a community picnic that received a mixed response in 1970 and 71. Organizers spent all of 1972 developing a new concept, which led to a festival that includes rides, food, and fireworks at the city's park at Farmington and Linden. The first Livonia Spree was launched in 1973, and it has always been organized by a group of local volunteers with profits going to scholarships and other community causes. The Spree has attracted tens of thousands of people each June for this festival, which has become a homecoming spot for many generations of Livonians who look to reconnect with friends, classmates, and neighbors. Dan Sperling is the uh, one of the board members and president of the Spree Committee. Dan, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Um, the Spree will look very similar to the most recent years leading up to 2019, but there's a few adjustments uh, you folks will have to make. Can you talk about those adjustments? Uh, most of the adjustments, we're gonna downsize a little. There's gonna be a few, fewer rides. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna get rid of the taste of Livonia. Unfortunately, that's a big draw for Spree. Uh, a lot of people are pretty disappointed that that's going. But in today's world, you can't even go to a restaurant. There's a, there's a lot of shorthanded <laughs> restaurants. They don't have enough people to run their own. Right. So they can't um, come out to those. Uh, beer and wine tasting, that's going to go. Uh, the only two that we're really going forward with is um, the breakfast and uh, the pizza night. For the, uh, for the fireworks show, you generally have over 100,000 people within a two mile radius of this park to watch that show. Um, yet every year this event goes off pretty smoothly. Talk about what it takes to make such an effort go so smoothly. It takes almost a year of planning. Uh, a lot of meetings with the police department, a lot of meetings with neighbors, uh, the fireworks company, they're excellent. Um, they've been great to work with all these years. Um, they know us, they know our fire department. Uh, there's a great working relationship with everybody in the circle and uh, never really thought about it. It just all comes together pretty smoothly. So, it's, a, it's an incredible team effort when you consider how many people are filtering through this area. Exactly, exactly. Um, all right, well, Dan, thanks for your time. And now we're going to talk to another committee member, uh, Bob Biga. Bob, you've been involved uh, since the very first spree in uh, 1973, the festival format that we see today. You've seen several generations of families, including several generations of your own family, enjoy this event. When you see people having a good time right here, what comes to mind? How, what does that make you feel? Well, I remember when my kids were little, we got on the rides and uh, we always looked forward to the fireworks, uh, food, getting a chance to meet people we hadn't seen in a while. Uh, reconnecting is great. Now I've got grandkids and uh, looking forward to bringing them back. I've got new grandkids, two, two years, or not quite two years old. Mm -hmm. And then I've got an 18 year old and we've got pictures in the file of, of, of all of the events and uh, fireworks uh, on, the, on the rides and uh, just been a, been a great time and getting, getting a chance to meet, mm -hmm. see people we haven't seen in a while. Uh, talk about missing the event the last two years. What came you know, those weeks in June, the last two years, what were you thinking when you weren't able to do spree? It was a total void. It was just like the world stopped. Everything that we had known before it was, was no longer. And uh, we really wanted to get back in and get something going to get the, the community in, involvement again. And it, it's, it's been tough, very tough. All right, thank you, Bob. And now we're going to talk to another longtime uh, uh, volunteer involved with Livonia Spree, Lee Bird. Lee, you grew up at the Livonia Spree. Your dad was part of the people that brought Spree uh, to Livonia here in the 1970s. So as a kid, you went to some of those early ones. And then later on, you were um, very involved in taking video and uh, uh, pictures for many, many years at this event. 
When you look at the images that you captured through the years, what, what stands out to you about Livonia Spree? Well, I'm going to take you back only because when you first mentioned the Livonia Spree, my first thought is um, my mom making brunch for then Glenway when it was mm -hmm. there. And we were so excited to go to the Spree with my dad because he was like a celebrity. Everybody knew him. Mm -hmm. You know, he'd walk by and, and he'd know everybody's name. So that was pretty cool. Um, but later, as um, being a part of the festival, gosh, there's so many images. Um, the bike parade with all the kids. Mm -hmm. um, one year we had, uh, when the Pistons were in the playoff, we brought a big screen TV. Just all the people having such a great time. I mean, there's so many things for so many people to do. The little kids, then the teenagers have their thing. And then, you know, at night it's like, it comes alive with, mm -hmm. you know, now us as adults, because so many people that still come here, were here when it was, you know, when it started. Mm -hmm. So it's just, there's just, there's so many, but I, I, I think just people having a good time. Behind the camera, you're just witness, you're able to just witness a bunch of smiles everything that's going on. That's what I'm gathering from that. When everybody's oh, happy, it fires you up. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You know, I mean, people would, they would love to just be on camera. I mean, we'd have a video camera out, people would run out. But like I said, everybody just having a great time. Mm -hmm. Just so much fun. It's just really is, it's a good time. And then the, you know, the beer tent, you, you know, the people haven't seen each other in years, the hugging, the reconnecting and all that stuff. That's that's uh, that's right. awesome to watch as well. And I so. think Bentley still does their get together on one of the nights. Sure, I yeah. think they do, but yeah. So, no, I mean, uh, you know, that's what's great about a small town. I mean, a big small town like ours, a lot of traditions, a lot of people keep in touch, a lot of people connect with it. And that's why Spree, it's great to see it come back because we are able to bring people back together that love this town so much. Right. So, so Lee, thank you for your time. I appreciate sure. this. You're welcome. So. The Spree will be open from 4 to 11 p.m. on Tuesday, June 21st. 2 to 11 p.m. on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and from 12 noon to 12 midnight on Saturday and Sunday. Live bands will perform on the main stage each evening from 7 to 11 p.m., and children's activities will take place each afternoon and evening. The Spree 5K Run and Classic Car Show returns on Sunday morning, and the fireworks are scheduled to launch after 10.20 p.m. on Sunday. We thank everyone for spending some time with Cityscape. We hope you're able to come out and enjoy the Spree, and we'll see you next time.